away your trash can. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus edible spoons, but first, a story submitted to us on Twitter at Angie Marie H. As the Maine House backs a constitutional change to protect the right to food choices. So this story comes from the Portland Press Herald from March 22nd, and it notes House lawmakers voted to move forward with a proposed Constitution amendment declaring Mainers have a right to food freedom, a step that could increase tensions among local food producers, government regulators, and the agribusiness industry. The amendment contains declarations of Mainers' natural, inherent, and unalienable right to grow, acquire, and consume food of their own choosing. Yet the lofty-sounding proposal stems from the growing debate in Maine and nationally over what some local foods advocates and small farmers view as overregulation by the government. The proposed amendment, which would need voters' ratification, comes after more than a dozen Maine towns have adopted food sovereignty ordinances, declaring that farmers can sell directly to consumers without government licensing or inspection. It's time to take back the food freedom that our ancestors enjoyed, said Rep. Craig Hickman, sponsor of the Constitutional Amendment and chair of the legislature's Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry Committee. If voters approved the proposed amendment, Maine would become the first state in the nation to write into its constitution rights regarding citizens' ability to grow, buy, and eat food. The amendment would also seek to guarantee Maine residents have the right to save and exchange seeds, an issue playing out in the courts nationally between farmers and producers of patent-protected seeds. And a glimpse at that might give you an idea as to why something like this might be so controversial. And again, it seems crazy times to think that we have to get constitutional amendments in our states about what we can put into our own bodies, but ultimately that's really what freedom on any level is. And when we see states like Maine pushing and getting through things like this and ultimately doing it yourself and just cutting out that middleman, but ultimately in some ways you got to play the game, you got to go through their game to play and bring back the rights that they took away from us that were never really theirs to take away in the first place. Our cover story this week on Good News Next Week for March 28th, 2016. I believe this is our 12th episode of Good News Next Week. And again, this is the spinoff from New World Next Week, the long-running series between myself and my good buddy James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, where all through 2015, we highlighted ways that we are winning. Every week, we po- we had some kind of positive story in some way, shape, or form. And sometimes it can be pretty slim pickings, and we'll always implore you to submit Good News Next Week stories using the hashtag, or you can even just email me, James, at MediaMonarchy.com. The Huffington Post has a story called, This Woman Fit Three Years of Her Trash in a Freaking Mason Jar. And the comments, as they are wont to do, are filled with bickering back and forth, and that's not what we're about. Ultimately, the idea of reducing your trash. So we called this throw away your trash can. And I'll make the note that actually Cassie and I last year got rid of our trash can and basically use a couple of Nancy's yogurt 32 ounce cups to do our trash. If we were able a little more set up here in the middle of the city in an apartments to do more composting, we would have next to zero garbage except for, of course, the occasional bag of chips. So the idea is that If you don't buy a bunch of garbage, you won't have to throw away a bunch of garbage. And this story on Huffington Post highlights a girl named Lauren Singer who started TrashIsForTossers.com, a no-waste lifestyle blog that gives you all kinds of tips about ways to reduce waste in your own life. And again, a lot of this stuff isn't about... Like Bill Hicks Hicks said, you know, joining a group or spending money or pledging anything. It's just removing your consent making that choice and that you're not going to buy a bunch of garbage that you don't need. So an example like when you're out at a bar getting a drink, I don't need a straw. I don't need some decorative little straw in there. The drink is already mixed. Those sorts of little silly easy things. And again, we've discussed on the morning show about the anti-packaging movement and bulk stores and the inconvenience store as it was named. If you don't take on the trash, you don't then have to deal with it. So that's a lot of the steps we've been making here at the house. And, 
using glass jars and reusable containers. And one of the ideas on Trash is for Tossers is for bamboo toothbrushes that come in paper packaging. And that actually leads us to our third and final story this week on Good News Next Week. And it was submitted to us by our buddy Jared at Rad Confluence, who simulcasts all the live Media Monarchy shows via RadioConfluence.com, and he's even on the TuneIn app. So, edible utensils made from food instead of plastic. A researcher in India invented edible spoons, sporks, and chopsticks. So, they're called bakeys. B-A-K-E-Y-S. And they're basically made out of millet, rice, and wheat. And they're baked until they're hard enough to use. They won't melt in hot tea or hot foods, but they are soft enough that you could actually bite into them. Now, I have a hard time thinking bakies.com is the very first invention of this. If I think back to middle school, when we had to invent something for science class, I remember Jamie Salvatore came up with this idea about an edible dog food spoon, that if you use it for wet food for your dog, that after a little while, you just crush it up and put it in the dog bowl and the dog eats it. She actually won that science fair with that invention. So this idea has been around long before, and that's the same thing with a lot of these stories that we talk about on Good News Next Week, and that's a lot of the realizations that we're sort of making all at the same time as this zeitgeist grows of voluntarism and removing our consent and removing our money from a lot of these places. Oh my God, who would have thought... Things are this actually simple in some ways. We've been sold, especially since the end of World War II, this overarching propaganda about the things that we need to consume and buy. And we've now seen the complete dead end of a lot of that, and that's why people are completely turning off and going in another way with, of course, the 21st century overlay, which is how you and I are communicating right now. We love when you submit Good News Next Week story ideas, and we've got a couple of Good News Next Week headlines. Our good buddy at Eric Moshe noted, Dung and Ophel make clean gas at a Costa Rica slaughterhouse. So basically what they're doing is turning all the gross byproducts into gas that actually powers their slaughterhouse. And they're pretty, I think, trailblazing in the Central American country. The amazing at Cassie Cohn has a story about chocolate cake being healthy for breakfast because science, and it actually shows that most of us don't really eat big breakfasts, and then we eat throughout the day, and that's what makes us fat and unhealthy. If we had a big, amazing, even yes, chocolate and sugary blast of an amazing breakfast, that's the thing that powers us through the day, as they've always sort of said, oh, that's right, breakfast is the most important meal. And we always love these kind of stories related to media. A lost 120-year-old newspaper collection is mysteriously returned to a library in D.C. And that story, appropriately enough, from the Washington Post, goes into this collection of the 1896 fall editions of the Washington Evening Star, a former newspaper in Washington, D.C., and it actually mirrors in some ways it's what we see right now. There was an insane presidential election going on. Again, I'll remind you, hashtag good news next week. If you've got good news next week story ideas, we'd love to hear some of the ways that we are winning from wherever you are in the world. And again, we have been bringing you independent, non-commercial alternative media from MediaMonarchy.com for over a decade now. And we can only do it with your support at MediaMonarchy.com slash support. PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, a P.O. Box, any number of ways that you can help support our work. This has been Good News Next Week for March 28th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media. Become the media. Take care. Yeah.